Father, we come to you in the never failing name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth this evening, O oh God. Even as we come into your presence this day, Father God, we come, Lord, with repentant heart, Lord, in whatever way we have faulted thee and failed thee, forgive us this evening, O oh God. As we come into your presence, Father, and as we sing and worship you this, this evening, O oh God, we pray, mighty God, that our praises and our worship will be acceptable, my God. We thank you, Jesus, for you are the King of kings, uh, the Lord of lords, the, the, the bright and the shiny morning star, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the fairest of 10,000. We give you all glory to night, Jesus. We thank you. It's because of you, O oh God, that we can stand in your presence this day, O oh God. It's because of you, mighty God, that we can come and approach an almighty God. It's because of you this day, my God, that the veil has been torn in two, my God. It's because of you that we live so victoriously, my God. We thank you this day, almighty God. We thank you for your blood this day. We release your blood upon this house this day, mighty God. We pray against every work of the enemy in the name of Jesus this evening. We bind and we cancel for your word. Say that what is bound the on earth is bound in heaven. What is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. And tonight, mighty God, we pray, mighty God, that we'll shake the portals of heaven, my God, tonight, uh, that your presence will come into this house, mighty God. We bring every care and burden before thee and we lay it at the altar this day, mighty God, because you are the God that answers with fire. You are the God of Elijah. Lord, we will not alter between opinions, but our minds are set. Uh, our hearts are set. Uh, our lives is entrenched in Jesus Christ of Nazareth this day. We thank you for you laid it all for us, oh God. If it hadn't been for you, Lord, where would we be, mighty God? Yeah, we're heading towards eternal damnation, but we thank you, mighty God, that you changed our destiny, mighty God, that you retract our footsteps, mighty God, and you are sending us heaven-bound to, to spend a life in eternity with you, oh God. We bless you and we thank you for your promises, oh God. Be with us, mighty God, as we further continue in Jesus' name. Even as your preacher man comes this evening, oh God, hide him behind the old rugged cross of Calvary, oh God, and anoint him afresh this day, mighty God, that even as he comes forth with your word, uh, your word will be thus and thus, saith the Lord. Uh, your word will fall on good grounds. Uh, your word will bring encouragement to us. Uh, your word will bring healing to us this evening, oh God, for we ask all these in the precious and the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. Amen. Let's give the, uh, the Lord a round of applause. Uh, amen. Welcome to Christ Kingdom Ministries this evening here at 94 Spearman Road. Are there any visitors? Can I see for the show of hands so I can welcome you first time, second time, third time? Can I see any, any visitors? All family tonight, welcome to those that are watching us via social media. We thank you for connecting with us. We pray that you will be blessed tonight with the service, even the word of God. And we pray that God will break through for you right there in your homes, uh, even as this recording goes forth, that it will reach many and bless them. So let us praise God uh, as we get into a time of worship. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship God. Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, because of who you are. I give you praise because of who you are. I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Over Jira, you might. Jehovah Jireh, you 
you we glorify your name you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords somebody just lift up your hands and worship him because of him he is we give him praise we give him glory we give him honor tonight hallelujah you are jaira you are enough come on say you are Jaira, you are love, and I will be content in every circumstance. You are Jaira, you are love. Sing Jaira, you are Jaira. You are now, hallelujah. You are Jaira. You are now in every circle. And I will be content, yes, in every circumstance. You are Jaira. You are now. You are more than enough. Always enough, more than enough, yeah, forever enough. Always enough, you are more than enough. Hallelujah, forever enough, always enough, more than enough, forever. Always enough, more than enough. Sing, Jaira, you are. Jaira, you are enough. Mm, you are Jaira, you are enough. I will be, I will be content in every circumstance. Hallelujah, you are Jaira, you are enough. Sing it one more time. Jaira, you are enough. Cause you are Jaira, you are enough. I will be, and I will be content in every circumstance. You are Jaira, you are enough. Jaira, you are enough. Father, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we draw me close to you, Lord. Never let me go. Hallelujah. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend. You were my desire.
Cause nothing else will take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace Help me find a way Bring me back to you For the things He 
Welcome you tonight, Holy Spirit. Welcome in this place. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Helper. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that blood. The blood that was not contaminated. The blood which still speaks today. It is alive and active. Thank you for that blood. Even as we remain in an attitude of prayer, I just want to share what the Lord showed me. The Lord is going to redefine the priesthood in this house. I saw myself in the middle. I saw pastor on the right hand side and I saw the prophetic mantle on the left. And I saw over the church and over us like a blanket, the blood of Jesus Christ. And it was raining blood. And I started to prophesy and I said, the blood in this season that we have entered, stepped into is gonna speak better things. So I don't know where you are, what you are going through, what situation or what pit you might find yourself in. The blood speaks. And on the right hand, the Lord said, right hand speaks of authority. That's where pastor was. And he said, he's got the right hand covered. It's covered. So tonight, I want you to believe God for your miracle. It's a month of October, it's a month, it's a cancer month. And whatever infirmity or sickness that is in your body, it has to go tonight. It's a night of miracles. Whatever infirmity, whatever situation you find yourself in tonight, it has to go. It has to go. Because we're raising up altars tonight. They are godly altars and they are satanic altars. So there are three altars we're going to pull down tonight. One is the altar of infirmity, which is sickness. One is the altar of limitations. And the other one is the altar of witchcraft, which is symbolic of death. No more premature death in this house. We're going to pull it down. And that's towards the end. So even as we journey this evening, I want us to have receptive ears and listening, uh, receptive hearts and listening ears 
to what the Spirit has to say because it's so important. If we miss this, we're going to blame ourselves because 2025 is just two months ahead. But with that, there's other things that I saw coming. And we need to be not weary. We need to be on guard. We need to be under the blood. We need to be under the cloud, so to speak. When the cloud moves, we move. If the cloud stops, we stop. But the everlasting covenant of the blood is there. It's available. And that's what the enemy is afraid of. And his job is to keep us tonight ignorant. Ignorant. From tonight onwards, there's going to be testimonies upon testimonies upon testimonies. We're going to raise up altars tonight. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for your spirit that accompany your word. I pray tonight that that blanket of that blood will overcover, overshadow everything here, everyone here tonight. We thank you for this altar that I stand on. It is holy, it is sacred. And we thank you, Father, for the angels that are around about here, the angels that are camping around this altar, Father. We pray today and tonight that, Father, you will move by your spirit and you'll prepare hearts and you'll touch lives. And, Father, they will never be the same. We thank you for that which you have started and that which you will complete. And we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just give the Lord a clap up. You may take your seat. You may take your seat. wasn't here for some time, but uh, nevertheless, you know, when I purposed to go and wait on the Lord, the enemy attacked me, and uh, I never felt pains in my life for over like 60 years now, and uh, I was rushed to the hospital, and uh, I didn't know that uh, private hospitals are just like government hospitals. I went to uh, 10 in the morning and I finished up half past five. And half past five was, they wanted to prepare a bed to operate me. Yeah. And uh, I told the doctor, I need a second opinion. They found out that I had stones in the gallbladder, not in the kidneys. Kidneys, if you've got stones, they can work on it. But gallbladder, they got to cut it out. I said, no. I said, I need a second opinion, meaning that I, I didn't want to go to any other doctor. Because you see, your faith will not, uh, your, 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 your faith level will not rise above the word you have. So you've got to know the word. And not only know the word, you've got to, in your walk with the Lord, you've got to add some time in your life to have an encounter with God. And I had many encounters. And the first encounter I had, I made a covenant. An altar speaks. Okay? Altar is going to speak tonight. An altar is a place where covenants are made. And God honors his covenant. When you look at the patriarchs of the Old Testament, like Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, everywhere where they went, they built altars. Now, those altars were bloody altars. But in the New Testament, we come to... Jesus Christ, these altars are not bloody because that blood, as much as it's, it's available, but it's a spiritual altar. And many of us to the, uh, that in this house, like myself, I come from a Hindu background, so I'm an Hindu convert. So we, we all have, you know, hired a temple. Many of you all still have, you know, we, we, we have those buildings. But what happens now we take so much of pride in preparing and doing things in that place that we subscribe to those gods or those deities. We do it with all ki kinds of sacredness and holiness. But how come when it comes to us who are serving a living God, we just disregard the sanctity and the sacredness of our God? And we need to examine our hearts this morning because... Tonight, if you don't prepare this altar, 
you know. And that altar is, 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 is about prayer. Prayer. Prayer empowers the altar. You cannot just come here and just stand and just sit and look if you're not prayed up. You've got to make sure you come here, your garment is clean. Don't come here with stay, uh, stained garments because this altar is so powerful, it's fire, you'll be struck dead. And we don't want that to happen. And the church, Bible says, Paul says, who has bewitched you? We start in the spirit, but we have ended in the flesh. We've come to the crossroads of our lives where we need to examine our hearts. We are long in the church. We are long in the kingdom of God. But how come we're still going through the nitty gritties of life? Because we're taking things for granted. Many of us here in the house, Tuesday and on Sunday, it's the only time you come here for prayer because I don't know, I'm not judging anybody, but I know in your devotion you're doing nothing. You're doing nothing. Because you think that the priesthood here are miracle workers. They're not miracle workers. If you are prayed up, if you are prepared, when you come here, you just pull something out of them. Because that's how the altar operates. The altar is a place, okay, of incense, where there has to be perpetual burning. You look at the Old Testament, when, when, when God destroyed this earth with water, the first thing Noah did when he came out, he built an altar. And the prayer that he put on the altar, or the sacrifice he put on the altar, became like an aroma to God. And God, when he breathed that freshness, that aroma, he was so pleased, he immediately made a covenant. I will not destroy this world again with water. That's Genesis 8. I will not destroy this. So altars is a place where covenants are made. And I don't know what you're going through, but you can come before God and, 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 and like Matthew 7 says, asking, seeking, and knocking. You can have an encounter with him. But you see, we didn't know. We, we come one time, we come two times, three times, and we say, like, I don't think so. God is going to hear me. But he that keeps on asking, he that keeps on seeking, he that keeps on knocking, the hardest thing as believers we do, or find to do, is waiting. We cannot wait before God. And sometimes he'll take days. Moses went up the mountain 40 days. God never pitched up. He waited a further eight days. Then the last day God pitched up. So we think now we worship, we praise, and we waiting there. Nothing is happening. We must learn the heart when we come before the altar what it is to quiet ourselves. Healing ourselves to the spirit. And that's the heart the church, the Holy Spirit, needs to teach the church. What is this to heal to him? In the process of all that we're going through, we have quenched the spirit and we have grieved the spirit. And that is why we look for God. We cannot find God. Because we brought pain to his heart. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's not wind. He has feelings. He has emotions. And he's easily wounded. By our attitude, our behavior, the way we communicate, the way we talk to people. And he has a hard job. His job is to present to Christ, the bride, a, a, a people that is washed in the blood, that is cleansed, that is full of faith, full of fire. A people that has their garments cleansed. So this morning, uh, this evening, Please, please bear with me. I have so much to say and share because this message was in my heart for so many weeks. Even when I was in Cape Town, I was just meditating on the same thing. I, you know, uh, th there's so much to share. So what we've got to understand is that when we look at my text today, 1 Kings 18.21, where uh, there was famine in the land. Elijah was a man just like you and I, like passion. He had weaknesses but yet he wield authority and power. 
He can call. He can stop the rain. Yes. But God supernaturally took care of him. Twice a day, bread and meat. He drank from the brook. But there was famine in the land. And he became a victim of his word. The brook dried up. But while the brook dried up, God was busy preparing and making a way for him. You might feel that nothing is happening. Everything is closed. Everything is tied up. When God doesn't make sense, he's busy working for you. But we've got to understand the altar. I spoke about a temple. Okay? How many of us really have an altar in our homes? In our homes. A, a, a sacred place, a quiet place, where we know every time when we have a, a problem or situation, we pray every day, we go to that place. And the moment we consecrate that place for God, the angels of God come there. And if you're honoring God at 6 o'clock every day, listen to this. God will come five to six and wait there. Why? Because that's a covenant. It's a, it, it, he wants to make covenant. An altar, let me just explain what it is. An altar is an intersection between heaven and earth. A spiritual airport where spirits land, where destinies are made. An altar is a system of authorization where covenants are made Covenants are activated and bring to life reality. No covenants without a halter. It's a place of exchange. It's a landing place like an airport where the supernatural meets the natural. Bible says in Psalms 105, the heavens belong to God, but the earth is given to you and I. That is a place of exchange. So he wants us to build an altar so he can come. But we are so haphazard. Yes, we are the living altar. Our body is the altar. You know, we think we go to the bathroom, the toilet and all. We will make every place an altar. Now, how do you think God feels when you get a picture and a glimpse of what the heavens look like? where the 24 elders and the cherubims and the cherubim fall down when they see that light coming. They fall down prostrate and they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. If they can do that, we are part of that eldership, part of that priesthood. Why we disregard the sanctity of the presence of God and keeping a place holy for God, where God can come and visit you. You might not have a big place. You might, you might have a small place, any place, just a small space, just where you can get on your face and says, Lord, this is my altar, and I dedicate it for your glory. And the moment you make that, a covenant is made, and God will come to visit you. God will come to visit you. I shared about the fire of the altar shall never be put out in Leviticus 6.13. So, which means God is restoring the order of the priesthood. Okay? The priesthood. So, only pri we are kings and priests unto God. So, only kings and priests unto God can come and burn incense. Come and call on him. How we really burning incense? The function of the priest is to create an atmosphere for the awareness of the presence of God so that our children and everybody in the house can recognize the voice of God. That is what it is all about. That is my sheep know my voice when I call the answer. How many times God called and we were disobedient, we went and we got hammered. And then we realized, I heard this voice saying, don't go this way, go this way. I, I didn't know it was God. Warning signs. God wants to warn him. He doesn't want to think things away from you. He wants to bring things to you. Preparation is important. And yet we see when, when, when Elijah had to go and show himself to Ahab, where this, his wife Jezebel was killing all the people, killing the prophets of God. And Obadiah was a, a godly man. And he managed to hide 100 prophets, 50 by 50. 
giving them bread and water. And yet there was famine. And then suddenly when he went and told his boss that Elijah is coming to see you, but before that he told him, go and look for grass all over to feed the donkeys or the horses. And he did that. And he was afraid. This Obadiah, the one that feared the Lord, was afraid. He thought that Elijah came to kill him. He says, no, I didn't come to kill you. I came to stand before your master to tell him that God's changing the, the order. Rain is coming. Rain is coming. And this October is significant for many things. The latter rain and the former rain. It was busting. I just said uh, this afternoon, uh, three-quarter parts of uh, Kamashu is flooded. Yeah. So it's not over. So what we've got to do is continually burn incense. Bible says without, okay, Psalms 105, it says there, 105, without God, without God, man cannot. Without man, God will not. Which means, if he's the heavens, and he's given us the earth, he wants a dialogue. You, 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 you carry on, you, you touch that with Chronicles where he says, if my people were called by my name. So, which means now, our prayer needs to empower the altar. We thank God for the men of this house that have prayed and have empowered this altar. So the altar is a flame. You might not see it in the natural, but in the spirit it's a flame. It's burning. Because the presence of God, there's fire. In the presence of God, there's fire. When the east gate opened and when that, that light come in, Suddenly, all the cherubims and the, air and the elders, 24 elders, just fall prostrate because nobody can see this glory. No one can see God and live. That is why he showed them bits and brittle, not the whole thing. If you know the whole thing, you'll get roasted and fried there. An altar is an intersection between heaven and earth, a spiritual airport where spirits are made and destinies are uh, spirits land and where destiny is made. An altar is a system of authorization where covenants are made. Covenants activate and bring li to life reality. No covenant, no altar. When we look at uh, Zechariah in, in Luke chapter 1, he stood in the temple, he was burning incense. Suddenly the angel came. Covenant making. Came from heaven to visit him. And he was so afraid, he was fearful. He didn't know what he was saying and the angel just made him dumb. But he was the priest. What he was doing? He was burning incense. Now imagine every time when you want to, in your house or wherever the spot you made, you go there and it's sacred. I, I, I'm speaking from experience. Uh, we've got a place where we call the altar. And no matter how sick you can be, you can sit there, you get healed. Because there's a different atmosphere there. It's not conducive to the atmosphere in the other rooms. And, 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 and men of God came and sat there and they were taken back because of what they sensed. Like my, my old pastor, Pastor John Torrance, when he came to my house, when he just sat there, he thinking, wow, what is this? I said, no, this is where we pray. It's a prayer altar. I'm not saying... I'm not belittling, I'm not uh, uh, judging anyone here today, but I'm telling you, if you go and prepare this place, wherever it is, and dedicate it for the glory of God, your life will turn around. Your life will turn around. You will see things you never saw before. You will get things you never got before. You will, God will, you see, the Bible says the secret things belongs to God. But he reveals his secret to them that fear him. If you fear God, he wants to bring secret things to you that the, the world doesn't know of. And we're coming in a time now where the spirit of the Antichrist is coming in. And if you are not building an altar, if you're not under the blood, or if you're not walking under the glory cloud, we're going to be in big trouble. We thank God for all that we have. Your job is not your source. God is your source. Our Father which art in heaven is source. We thank God for salaries, but he is 
the one that gives you the power to get wealth. Spirits that are on the earth are looking for bodies. Okay? Jesus had to take on flesh so that in Hebrew, the Bible says, a body has been prepared for him. And Mary was the body, the host, to carry Jesus. So that was a legal way. See, the devil doesn't come legal uh, in any situation. He doesn't come legally. His job is to steal, kill, and destroy. How many times... You will, you, you, you will be praying, and suddenly you said, hey, I saw something move, or I saw something shake. What's that moving and shaking? The spirits are looking for bodies. They have free access. But when you build that altar, God will reveal and show you things that no spirits or unclean thing can come near your dwelling. The Bible says no plague shall come near your dwelling. If you're making Psalms 91 your abiding, your abode, your habitation, your dwelling, you can make sure you promise of a blessing. Because the word says in verse 3, Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from his nauseous pestilence. Surely he'll give your angels, his angels charge over you. I, in our early days when we moved to our home, we, we started to pray and seek God. And I didn't know that I was going to build an altar. And suddenly, the, the, the angels of God appeared. And I heard the voice of God say, because you made your dwelling and habitation for my presence, therefore it is written, I'll give my angels charge over you. And if you come to my house, I mean, don't come with natural eyes, come with spirit eyes, you'll see angels. Yeah, you'll see angels. My son, uh, Caleb, he has a tall angel. And we had, uh, we were just leaving, we left, in fact, somebody opened the gates and they reversed their car and they came in and they wanted to, they had a crowbar, they were trying to open the garage door and I think the crowbar fell. My son Joshua was in the garage and he came to the gate and he watched these guys, six burly guys or four burly guys, and they came with a brand new car, they reckon they're looking for a mechanic. <laughs> Thank God for wisdom. He's a... He's a bright boy. He looked carefully. He stood far from the gate, and they were coming closer. They wanted him to come closer so they can grab his clothes. Immediately, my son Caleb came in the back. And when they saw Caleb, they dropped everything, and they ran away. And when I heard this, I asked the Lord. And in fact, when you asked Gresham, Gresham came, he saw the angel. And I saw it also. He was so tall, he was standing behind him that the angels of God encamp around those that fear the Lord. The secret thing belongs to God, but he will give it to you if you fear him. Amen. Fear him. The problem with us, we walk without the fear of God. We disregard, we disrespect, we talk to people anyhow. We don't know that we are vessels of honor. In the house of God, they are vessels to honor and they are vessels to dishonor. What kind of vessel are you today? What kind of vessel are you today? Because your lifestyle, your character, your nature will tell me exactly, do you know God? You cannot be 20, 30 years in the church and all you know is he saved your soul. It's far beyond saving your soul. You got to have testimonies. Testimonies. I said, spirits are looking for a body. Jesus had to get a body, and that was Mary. Altars give you license, license to spirits you operate in the realm of the natural. Build your prayer life first. In Luke 18, verse 1, it says, men are always to pray and not to faint. So if you're fainting, you're not praying. If you're not praying, you're fainting. So your prayer life, I said, empowers the altar. And when you come and get before your face and you say, Lord, Psalms 141 verse 2 says, let the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Amen. Yeah. When you, when you do that before him, he can see a vessel that is unto honor. And God is so pleased. 
And then every time when you come to the altar, it's a cleansing. You're acknowledging who he is. And then C, you know, I always use A-C-T-S. Acts is confession. I confess everything before God. T, thanksgiving. Thank him for what he has done, what he's doing, and what he's going to continue to do. And S is, I submit to his will. I submit. Let your will be done in my life. Let me be a blessing to the body of Christ. Let me bless others. Life is not based on how much we can accumulate. Yes, we thank God if we are rich, but if you're rich and if you're somebody that sees the needs in the house and you become stingy, then you're not rich, you're poor in the sight of God. That's how God looks at it. Because every time when Jesus saw the need, what he did? He met the need. He met the need. Imagine going on a crusade for three days. Supernatural. Nobody spoke about eating. And on the third day when he was coming to the end of his crusade, he said, this, Lord, send them away. It's getting late now. He said, we can't send them without eating. And he said, got anything to give them? He said, no, one boy here got five loaves and two fishes. What is that among so many? Where Jesus comes from, there's no lack. There's no lack. If you are in him and he's in you, you can ask him anything. Anything. Coming back to the testimony, I forgot. Yes, I started to remind God. I said, Lord, remember your covenant? You spoke to me when I had an encounter with you. I told you this, this, this. And he said, son, yes, go, and I'll bless you. Made that covenant. And when I stepped out of the hospital, I didn't tell anybody. I stood there, and I started to remind God. I said, Lord, you're not a man that you lie. You honor covenant. And I thank you that your word says in Psalms 34, not one of your bones were broken. Okay? I said, I'm not going to allow man to take my organ away. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And as I stepped out and stepped into the vehicle, from that day till today, I don't know. But you see, I'm not saying you to do what I did. Amen. Your faith level has to arise. Amen. The knowledge of God's word. Amen. You cannot go and say, oh, the pastor said, throw this uh, metformin away, throw this away, you will die. <laughs> yeah, you will die. You've got to come to a place of recognition where you've got to believe God and take God at his word. There's a difference between divine health and there's a difference between divine healing. I walk in divine health. Divine healing is you come, we pray, you get healed. But divine health is totally different. Totally different. No place come near this dwelling. And God has honored his word. He's honored his covenant. And I live by that. You can ask my family. Yes, all my life. God has honored his word over my life. And I pray today that if you know how to empower altars, give license to spirits to operate in the realm of the natural. Build your prayer life first. Prayer empowers the altars. It is prayer that built capacity. Jesus was a man of prayer. A Christian who cannot pray is a Christian that won't stand. He won't stand. Bible says in Matthew 20, uh, 13, 25, while men slept, the enemy came in. There's a spirit of lethargy and laziness that is blanketing not only our homes, but the church, the body of Christ. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, uh, about Tuesdays and Sundays. Your, your effectiveness is not on a Tuesday and on a Sunday. Your effectiveness is on the days you're not at church, at your marketplace, at your workplace, wherever you're practicing, whatever you're doing, is the kingdom of God established there. If it's not, then we've got a big problem. We've got a big problem. Yes. While men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears. He came to steal your harvest. He sowed tears. And then the, uh, the Lord asked the man, did you sow good seeds? How come? He says, overnight, you know, he said, okay, let them grow together. 
and when they full bloom, we'll cut the weed, we'll take the weeds out, we'll take the dirt. Church, the altar is an important thing. Sometimes we fall prostrate, we fall by the altar, we pray, we pray on our stomach, we do all kinds of things. It is good because when you're at the altar, at the feet of God, you got no problem because heaven is his, earth is his footstool. And we're at the altar. And to know that, we are seated with him in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. God wants to bring healing and restoring your, your body. Exodus 15, 26, he says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Psalms 107, uh, 20, he sent his word and he healed all our diseases. And I got a spot here that I wrote, share my testimony, but I shared it before. God wants to shut down three altars tonight. Three altars. The altar of sickness, when your health is attacked and sabotaged, your destiny is delayed. How many of you all here today, you are afflicted with some kinds of affliction? Very good, man. Nobody. Very good. I'm amazed. This is a word-based church. They're standing on the word. You may be healed, but is your destiny delayed? Is your destiny delayed? The second one is the altar of stagnation, not going anywhere financially. You bring much, but you cannot account for it. Things are going to change tonight. Get ready to testify. How many of you have going through that problem? Finances, oh, that's good. The third altar, the altar of witchcraft, which is the altar of death. The spirit, you know, we, we still uh, reeling from the effects of COVID and COVID is not gone, it's still available. It's still available to those that are available, but, <laughs> but you, gotta, you gotta put your foot down. Yeah, where you got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Enough is enough. Many of us took the vaccine, but did you render that thing powerless in your body? Because they did predict in the next five years, all kinds of abnormality will manifest, and which is so true. You know, uh, while I was in Cape Town, wow, you know, I was inundated with call from our church. People are, wanted prayer. Even on Sunday when we arrived, we had to rushed to somebody's home for prayer and 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 it was good it was uh, because i made a c commitment to god and a covenant i said lord no matter how busy i could be if anybody needs attention prayer whatever i'll be available and i went and we did what god wanted us to do so tonight in the light of what i was saying or sharing i want us to know that we are building prayer altars tonight prayer altars Okay, it's, it's, it's a sacred place. It's a consecrated place. It's a place where God wants to visit you. Yes. Away from all the, the television, the buzz, and the, and, and, and the munching and all. It's a, it's a separated place, you know? And, and, and when you do that, be prepared to know that your faith is going to make reward for you. Where without faith, it's impossible to please God. And whatever you design to to, to bring. And, and if you look at uh, uh, Obadiah, what happened there was Jezebel was doing all kinds of wrong things in this guy in, in, in for the church. And many of us are, uh, are like what uh, Pastor Ashton shared about idols. And many of us has come to that stage and because we come from backgrounds that are symbolic of that, we don't know indirectly we went back into that. We went back under that. And that is why we cannot empower the prayer altar. We're struggling. We're struggling. I know I went to, to I always walk into homes and I look for any, any loop way. You know, like uh, many of us are into converts. We, 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 we dedicate our lives, our home, everything, but we keep all those ornaments we call. And, 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 and I investigated and found out, if you look at those ornaments, 
they have signs that are symbolic of Hindu deities, Hindu spirits. And those are mediums for the spirit to come. Because there was a guy that had a, a temple, and if you got a temple in your yard and you, it's redundant, you just maybe got your old bottles or bottles stored in there or whatever. A guy came for prayer in our home, and uh, he was suffering with the vitiligo. And they were chopping pieces of his flesh to do testing. And, uh, but he's, they, they did everything, but they couldn't find anything wrong with him, but his body was in pain. So somebody told him, you know, come to <laughs> Ottawa, you know, and uh, he came. When he came, uh, I told take a seat, we, we'll come just now, we'll pray. And uh, when he came, immediately the Lord showed me in front of him, I saw this temple. I said, tell me something, are you an Hindu convert? He said, yes. I said, but then, uh, he said, no, all the deities and all, I gave it all away. But I said, you got a temple in your yard. He said, yes. I said, the Lord's saying, telling me to tell you, take a hammer and you break it from the rooftop, every piece of the brick to the foundation. As you break it, that pain will go and you'll be totally healed. Wow. Why? Because I said an altar is a place, it's a landing, it's a, it's a platform for spirits to land. And these spirits, when they come out, they wander about, they're flying and they're saying, hey, let's go back to our house. And when they're flying, they, hey, that's our house. They, they all come and park there. And when, they, and when they're sitting there, they're oppressing you. They're depressing you. Why? Because these are spirit dimensions that we never learned we, the Bible school will not teach you these things. And, and, and you've got to recognize that the moment he did that, he was totally healed. He never came back, never came to thank God to. Yeah. So what am I saying? Why did I say that tonight? I, sa I said that if you've got anything like that in your home, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Because that's what, that's what Jezebel did. And Elijah, even as he brought these people together, he wanted to, like an old crawl carol, uh, you know that Western movie, showdown at uh, something. He wanted, to, he wanted to show the power of God. And you know something? You've got to make sure your life is clean, your life is right, before you can uh, put challenges to people and put all kinds of things to people because Elijah was a man like that because he recognized who he was. And, and if we recognize who we are and know how to wield authority, you can have victory every day of your life. Every day. Because your secret place is the altar. Morning, noon, and night. I said the function of a priest is to perpetually burn incense so that you can create an atmosphere for the presence of God where the house or you can hear and recognize the voice of God. And that's the most important thing in our lives, to know that Romans 8, they that are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. You must be led by the Spirit. Don't do things in the flesh so carnally because you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Not going to make it. And this time we're living in now, God is redefining the order. The order, the Holy Ghost is coming and he's just blowing on the church. He's trying to revive the church. He's trying to get all the grit out of the church so that we, we're coming into difficult times, difficult seasons. But you see, only the, in the kingdom of God, only the strong is going to survive. Only the strong. And that's why I always say in our sessions, I said, create covenant links covenant fellowship. Don't isolate yourself because if you isolate yourself, the devil will take you out. But when you know somebody that knows how to pray, knows the word, talk to them, pray with them, visit them. They come to visit you, pray together and what? You are covered. You're protected. The blood of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in, 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 in 1 Kings 18 in closing, and Elijah said to the people, come near to me and all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar that was broken down by Jezebel. Okay? 
And then we're going further and we said, and, 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 and he called all the people, and okay, they, they, they cut bullocks, there were altars there, he cut it in pieces, he, put, he told them to do whatever they want to do and call on your God. And they called day and almost the evening sacrifice. And by the time the evening sacrifice came, they thought there was nothing. There was nothing. And then he said, all the people, come near to me. And at the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I'm your servant and I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that the people may know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have turned their hearts back to you. In our deliverance, in our doing, going and visiting, whatever, don't put emphasis on you. Put it on the Lord. Because people must come to God, not to you. And I always says in our deliverance session, <clears throat> this meeting is not centered around me. It's centered upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is, he is the deliverer. He went about, how he was anointed with the Holy Ghost, went about doing good, healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. It is him. He is our role model. Don't put emphasis on yourself. People must learn to submit and surrender to the will of God so that they can come to Christ. And when you come to Christ, we thank God for God using people in the house. But we also have like passion needs, weaknesses and strengths. So you don't come and wear the man of God down. Don't do that. And Elijah turn the people back to God. And what do you think happened? You've been doing a lot of things in your own, in your own ways and what have you. you. You love the Lord. You've been serving God. You've been praying. You've been asking. You've been seeking. And like nothing seems to be happening. You can't sense him anyway. It's like this. you're not feeling anything. If you want this thing turned around, empower your life by the altar. Empower your life by the altar. And it's time now to seek God. It's time now to seek God with all our hearts because this revival that is coming, it's one of the greatest moves. Back to back, all the revivals are going to be nothing to what God is going to outpour in these days in 2025 and beyond. But you see, it'll come and go. You'll not even get your feet wet if you're not prepared. Before he can repair the altar, he had to prepare himself. The altar that was broken down, he had to repair it. And he made it hard. He made it difficult. But he had faith to believe that when he prays, God will answer. And immediately, the fire of God fell. And what do you think happened? And all the people saw it. They fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord is he is God. Are people seeing you and they really want to come to church with you? Or when they see you in your defeated ways and your, uh, your, your lack and your, 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 your negative words, how people want to come with you? Do you can really, you know, Pastor always says, bring one. You know, I've got here prayer of three on a card. Pray for three. How many people... If we want this church to be full, we have a responsibility before God. That is why I'm saying all, all, all we've been saying and doing for all these years, thank God for saving my soul. We've lost the flame of evangelism. We lost the flame of door-to-door -door witnessing. We lost the compassion to go and see the needy and care for the people. We've lost it. And God wants to restore that. And how does he do it? He does it by the altar. In closing, there was a lady that loved the Lord and the Lord told her to go to a certain hospital in a certain ward, gave her the name of the hospital, certain floor, but she was so busy making biscuits. She had it in the heaven. She says, Lord, not now. Let my biscuits come out, then I'll go. She did that. She, after the biscuits came out, 10 minutes. Sometimes God tests us to see exactly 
Are we willing and obedient? Only if you are willing and obedient, you lead the fat of the land. And we're coming into a season in 2025. Uh, I said, and I'm going to not scare us, but I believe if you're not under the cloud, if you're not under the covering, if you're not under the blood, I don't know where we're going to be. This lady went 10 minutes later, she went down the road to the hospital. She walked to that ward, certain floor, she went up the lift, she went, she opened the door and she went in, she saw the nurse dusting the bed, cleaning it up, preparing it for the next patient. And she asked the nurse, where is that, uh, where is the patient that was on the bed? And she said that patient died 10 minutes ago. Imagine you missed your destiny with God, your appointment with God. And then if you miss that appointment, you've got to go 40 years again like a cycle. Don't do that. But this altar will empower you to recognize the voice of God. Shall we all rise? Pastors. The altars. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Would you put your hands together for the Lord this evening? As the pastors come up, um, we're going to pray first for the first altar they're talking about. And it's an altar that affects your health and it affects your um, sickness and delaying your destiny. And with that, we have some prayer requests. So if you are not well in body, and you're standing there right now, not well in body, and you haven't put your hand up earlier on, it's fine. We're going to break that tonight, amen? amen. And then we're going to get Pastor Max, who's going to pray very quickly, and we'll be done in the next 15 minutes or so. An altar of stagnation about finances, breaking that financial issues. And God's going to do something special tonight, amen? It's a miracle night. Amen. So, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name this evening. Father, first of all, we declare and decree over every prayer request over Salvi and Leslie and Neela and Rajan and Mother Shanti, Mother Maureen, Colin, Joseph, Sally, Tanya, Shandani, Kenny, Caleb, all these requests, Father, over Ricky and Kathy and Vasan and Mala. Father, you are the God that heals. And today we break that altar, Lord, that's affecting their health right now. Anything from the past, anything from the bloodline, we break it in Jesus' name. There'll be no more sabotage in that bloodline. There'll be no more curses in that bloodline. Because they've received the name of Yahshua Mashiach. Your word says you have marked us on our forehead. Your word said your name is written in our heart. And by your stripes we are healed. Today I declare every prayer request even the name that we don't have right now, that's asking God for a miracle. Even in this auditorium, auditorium right now, every one of you that's asking God for a miracle, I declare from your feet to your ankles, to your knees, to your hips, to your loins, to your shoulders, and to the top of your head, healing is your portion. I declare every organ that is functioning right now, that's having an issue, it's going to function properly. I declare new organs, new organs over you. There's going to be new organs, rejuvenated cells, every blood disease. And as the man of God says, the world calls it cancer month. We declare it is a month of healing of cancer. I declare every cancer cell right now gets, oh, every white cell and every red cell starts growing better. It stops dying off right now. Every lump, every cyst is gone in Jesus' name. We speak over our praise and worship team. Every ailment, every irritation is taken away right now. Lord, you know they're in the forefront, Lord. And so let every sickness depart at the sound of my voice. By your blood, we call it done. In Jesus' name. Pastor Max is going to pray over your finances right now. And that thing that's worrying you, that altar of stagnation, is going to be broken. In Jesus' name. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
you are God Almighty. Father, you set us up. Yes, dear Lord. Father, you build, Father God. Oh, yes, dear Lord, in us. Yes, Father, you equip us. Oh, yes, dear Lord, Father God, you make us, Father God, oh, yes, dear Lord, to stand against any force, Father God, of stagnation in the name of Jesus. We, we refuse, Father God, we refuse every, every, every spirit of the enemy, oh, yes, dear Lord, that steals our joy. Yes, Father, we pray to God, Father, that, dear Lord, Father, you will move us, you will equip us, Father God, that, dear Lord, we will stand any force, Father God, we will overcome, Father God, by the blood of the lamp in the name of Jesus, in our businesses, Father God, in our homes, in our personal lives, I pray to God, Father, that, dear Lord, you will, Father God, oh, yes, dear Lord, see us through in every, in every situation, Father, in every, Father God, event that is happening, in every project that we have, Father, I pray, dear Lord, Father, that you will equip us, you will build in us, Father God, oh, yes, dear Lord, a spirit that will not, Father God, throw in the towel, that will not give up a God, but Father, we will, Father God, be equipped, oh, yes, to stand against all forces of darkness. Father, I pray right now that your people, Father God, as they look up to you, Father, as they cry unto you, Father, they will receive in abundance. Father, they will lack nothing in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Father, equip them, Father. Equip them, O God. Oh, yes, dear Lord, give them a spirit, Father God. Oh, yes, dear Lord, of never giving up. Oh, yes, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your people, Father, for they will receive, they have received tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, we come against the altar of witchcraft. The spirit, Father, that is plaguing the body of Christ and in the form of death, Father. Lord, there will be no more premature death in our families, in our homes, in our churches, Father. Tonight we come against that spirit witchcraft. We destroy the satanic altar that has been raised against the body of Christ. And today, Father, we thank you for the superior blood of Jesus Christ. And even as Elijah called on fire, and Father, fire fell and destroyed that satanic uh, that altar, Father, the offering. I pray tonight that even as we raise the altar, Lord of incense, before you, we come against the satanic altar that have been raised against the body of Christ. We destroy that altar by the fire of heaven. We thank you, we destroy it. I bind the spirit of death. I command it to go into the outer darkness, never to return again. In the name of Jesus. Father, whatever your people are feeling or plagued with, Lord, we command these spirits to stand down. In the name of Jesus. We command them to stand down tonight. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. Now, Lord, let the blanket of your blood, let it rain blood upon your people. That they will know that when they leave this place even today, they will be under the blood. And when they under the blood, the devil can do them no harm. And we thank you for it today. We give you praise and glory and honor because the blood is speaking tonight of better things, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give God Lord a hand. Amen. I believe you've already received the victory. Amen. Because of time, I'm going to get Pastor Reuben to close. But all the pastors are going to be right here. And we're going to pray over whoever wants prayer. Amen. We're going to release you because of the people that's writing exams. We've got to be sensitive to that. And the pastors will still be here after we close. Amen. To pray whoever needs prayer. Pastor Reuben. Oh, Father, we thank you today. We thank you for the word that's come forth, oh God. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is healing in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is deliverance in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is forgiveness in the blood of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we pray for each one that has come and also heard the word of God. Father, I pray that today I pray and plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon every family that is present here, Lord, is our prayer. Father, I pray that 
blood of Jesus Christ will protect them from danger, God. The blood of Jesus Christ will give them victory over every situation that they're going through, God. Father, that uh, the, even as they, uh, as they will go to, Lord, we pray the blood of Jesus Christ, blood of Jesus Christ over the children, blood of Jesus Christ over the vehicles, blood of Jesus Christ upon every Oh, my God, the enemy will not come and steal or destroy us, God, because we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. What can make me hold again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me hold again? Nothing. Lord, we thank you. We are overcomers through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Even as your servant spoke on the blood of Jesus Christ, we know the blood of Jesus Christ is still crying out, for souls, still crying out for souls. The blood of Jesus is alive and powerful is our prayer. That Jesus Christ shed his precious blood for us so that we can live an overcoming life. We can walk in victory and not in defeat, O oh God. So, Father, we pray for every family that is not, some of them couldn't make it, O oh God. You will send your word and touch and heal them and strengthen them by the power of our God Almighty. So, Father, we pray, pray for the threefold blessing of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to lead, to guide, and to direct us and give us a victorious week is our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen.